Hello, welcome to a portrait drawing with charcoal. This is the reference image that I'll be working from. So first off, I want to show you the tools that I'll be using. This is a charcoal sachet. It helps me pounce big masses of darks without having to make any indentions into the paper. I also use a kneaded eraser. The kneaded eraser can be molded into a fine point and also molded into a flat shape. Because with charcoal drawing, I try to think about what can give me the shape that I need. I don't try to think about outlining or making shapes with a line. I think about what will what, sh what tools can I use to make the shape that I have? I, most, I also use the soft vine charcoal. Always use soft. It's the darkest. And then I have my medium or my soft charcoal pencils and hard charcoal pencils. I don't really do any of the mediums because I can kind of sneak up to the forms that I need using the soft and hard charcoal pencils. You sharpen the pencils using a razor blade or your X-Acto knife. I also use the carpenter sandpaper sharpening tool to sharpen my charcoal pencils. And I also use the dusting that stays on the sandpaper for excess charcoal medium when I need it. I especially use it for my blending stumps I had the largest blending stump and the smallest blending stump. Make sure that one side is clean and then one side you use to pick up charcoal dust as you see there. You just kind of roll it on the excess on the excess and it picks up the charcoal that you need. Now when I think about drawing from a, the figure or a human face. I do not think about drawing eyes. I don't think about drawing noses, foreheads, or anything like that. What I am thinking about are massive darks and light shapes. And so you can see here with the charcoal sachet, you can really attack the paper with charcoal medium and you maintain control because the powder is just sitting on top of the paper. I also like to use the back of the charcoal sachet to kind of work like a brush tool. Brushing in large shapes. Again, that charcoal sachet helps me maintain control and get my overall darks. I'm not concerned with how do I get those eye shapes to look exactly the way they look. The forehead, the shadows, or the specifics of the face. I'm just thinking about the overall darks and lights. You can see here that I will be brushing across my forms with the back of my charcoal sachet to make the edges blend seamlessly. And also, I will drag charcoal powder and charcoal medium across the paper. Now I don't um, put charcoal everywhere because I don't need as much charcoal in the forehead as much as I need charcoal in the darkest parts of the hair. So I look for those dark shapes and then pounce with the charcoal sachet medium and then drag medium towards the light areas and pushing um, edges together to soften what I'm drawing. I really try to think about combining edges and making everything seem like they're together right from the beginning. You can see that the overall abstract shapes that I'm making 
are pretty confident but they will not stay there exactly where I, I placed them I'm confidently putting things down because the overall dark shapes are easy to make when I'm not thinking about what they actually are whether it's the side of a face or the hair the hairline I'm just really trying to get those dark shapes established while at the same time keeping my edges soft until I'm ready to sharpen them where they need to be sharpened here I am um, pouncing the charcoal sachet where the eye sockets are and now I'm pouncing the charcoal sachet to the shadows of the left side of the reference and here I'm noticing that things are still kind of disconnected and overall the overall paper doesn't have as much activity and connection that I want so I'll use that back of the charcoal sachet to blend edges together and there you can see the ghostly image the ghostly underdrawing of a charcoal and that is how you get more effective realism at such a quick pace because when you're working from a model from life you don't have the time to make an exact contour drawing then take that contour drawing and make overall darks and lights and then specify the specifics of the middle values laying down a ton of charcoal medium will get you the values that you need quicker there I just wanted to show you by using the kneaded eraser on the forehead you can see how dark I have actually made the surface with all that medium that highlight stands out again I'm not really con thinking this is exactly where all these shapes are it's just an estimate of where the darks are and where the lights are and then from there I will refine the dark shapes and light shapes so here I'm molding my needed eraser to help me pull out some medium and pick up some light I will also once I pick up or erase areas with the needed eraser I will use the blending stump to soften it or tone it down now I am only using the knee eraser at this point or I mean it's right there I'm using the blending stump with charcoal powder that I picked up off the sandpaper and you can see how dark and exact the shapes of the blending stump can make again now I'm doing more specific general dark abstract shapes and using the side of the blending stump to create sort of a brush effect using a thick line to create shapes not small lines to create those broad shapes here I'm picking up um, more medium on the blending stump and when you do this make sure that you keep one side clean on the blending stump and one side dirty the dirty side will pick up your charcoal powder to lay down onto the paper now the reason I go from the charcoal sachet to the knee eraser and the blending stumps primarily is because I maintain as much control as possible in a charcoal drawing using these tools will make successful drawings because you maintain control from the beginning and by that I mean once you start using fine charcoal in your charcoal pencils you're actually scratching the paper each mark you were 
in 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 some in some level damaging the paper surface because you're scratching. The blending stump and the kneaded eraser and the charcoal sachet keep things on top of the paper, not digging into the paper. So, in technically, I could take my kneaded eraser and erase all of this down to the white of the paper. That's a good thing. It can also be a bad thing because what you will find is if you don't stack the charcoal correctly, you'll think that you're always erasing your image. If you find that by adding another layer you feel like it's erasing, it's because you're not to the right step yet. You're trying to make it too dark too early. So here, still using the blending stump, looking for those overall dark shapes and making that shape with the side of the blending stump. And as I progress, things become more accurate. I am sneaking up to the forms. This is a great technique because it can increase the probability of becoming something more than just a copy of nature. It can become something more conceptually based because you can keep your drawing open for a lot longer using these steps and these tools. And by keeping things open, you can have you can conclude your drawing at any step if it works. You can go all the way to exact realism or naturalism, the way you see it in front of you, or you can keep things abstract as long as you're knowing or expressing your lights and your darks and your middle grays in some way. That's why this technique is so excellent because it keeps things open-ended until you conclude them as an artist. This is the part that takes the longest in your drawing, is getting those big dark and light shapes exactly where you see them. Because I'm thinking about the the light of the cheek on the left side as a light triangle. Then I think about the nose as a rectangle, the dark on the left side of the nose, a dark rectangle. I'm only thinking about shapes. I am not thinking about nostrils, what the lips are doing. I'm thinking about what are those shapes doing. The sooner you th ask yourself, what is that shape doing? What is it doing in the round? How do I make it look round in my 2D paper? As soon as you start thinking that I'm drawing shapes and not a human face, you begin to make more believable drawing and, and, and a more compelling drawing at that. At this point, finally, I pick up my soft fine charcoal because I'm ready to stack on some dark and I've latched onto a cornerstone at this point. My cornerstone for a little bit will be the eyes and the nose. Because when we talk to someone, we're looking at their eyes. And the closest thing to their eyes next is the nose. And especially if you just think about the anatomical features of a human, the nose actually sticks out farthest furthest so by rendering the nose also you are rendering the shape that is closest to you in nature now something that I have seen um, students focus on the eyes is the white of the eye is always too white way too soon because you're not using enough medium 
because I have pounced those sockets with the charcoal sachet, there's a lot of medium there that all I need to do is accent the darkest areas with that soft fine charcoal and then lift up highlights with my nudity eraser in the right spot. Then all the other information, the middle grays, the middle values, the transition values, those will lock into place once I've established those accented darks with the fine charcoal and the knee eraser. I had forgotten to place a scrap piece of paper to the side of my drawing to test out the side of the vine charcoals because you won't use the vine charcoal as a point. You'll be using the vine charcoal side. And the reason you need plenty of vine charcoals is so that you can break the vine charcoal to be the exact size that you need it to be. Try do not try to make a big a long vine charcoal work for you in a small area. Break that thing into the piece, the size, the width that it needs to be in order to complete the shape. Trust me with that. Now when I am drawing also, I try not to think about adding medium in the exact zone that I'm focusing on. I will actually intentionally cross the borders, the boundaries of that shape into other shapes next to it. So I will actually make the shape longer than it is so that that way the shape coincides and exists together with the shape next to it. So once I've s I'm starting to see that I can actually make all these darks look believable. And the only thing that I'm using at this point is still the vine charcoal. Even the soft vine charcoal, I can still erase to white. And that gives me so much control still at this level of the drawing. And I won't have to go over those dark areas that I have accented already with the soft vine charcoal because they're already in place for me. So I will not be using pencils until that area that I'm working on comes to a finish. And I will use the pencils to accent the darkest darks in that area. So the beginning stages take a long time because I really want those big dark shapes and light shapes to be somewhat accurate in its most basic geometric form. Then I start refining some of those darks with my vine charcoal or the, sorry, the blending stump with charcoal powder attached to it from the sandpaper then I bring my vine charcoal in the stick and start laying in more accurate shapes from there so it goes from very abstract to a little more refinement to more refinement and so on you cannot draw with charcoal efficiently from life if there is not enough medium on your paper because your highlights, your strongest highlights will be so weak if the white of the paper is showing on the middle tones of your model. That's why I need to put as much medium as possible on the paper right away. Uh, here I start to look at the overall composition of the drawing and it starts to look kind of static and uninteresting to me and at every level of the drawing i want it to be beautiful so that i am excited to be in that area that i'm in so here i'm starting to think let me let me think about the outside edges the atmosphere of the model's hair and think about what i could do to make it look interesting to me 
at some point too, I will start to see that my drawing is kind of looking a little stiff and edges are starting to become separated because they become too hard. The edges become too hard, everything looks static and strict and not effortless. So at some point in the drawing, I will grab my charcoal sachet and use the back of it to soften and bring edges closer. Here, here it is right here. So I'm actually traveling across the whole drawing and I'm not scared to mess that up because it's actually going to make it better. I'm going to make, I'm going to create more atmosphere. My edges are going to be closer together. And then when I come in to accent the marks with my charcoal pencils, which is the most, most permanent, I will have these amazing grays that have happened because I'm blending all my edges together. And then my accents co bring everything into submission and into realization. So here, I'm still using the back of the charcoal sachet to blend all my edges together. And I, and I change directions often. I will always try to do, if, I, if, some, if I'm moving my um, charcoal sachet or lines um, across shapes, I will do it perpendicularly. So if uh, something is, if there's a line that's moving horizontally, I will go vertically. I will go against it perpendicularly, whatever angle it's going on. So that way it doesn't feel like it's stiff and stuck in its boundary. Instead, it's traveling across the edge that the shape is traveling to. Again, just think of using, changing your lines perpendicularly against the edge or direction that the shape is going. Here I'm starting to pick up some of the white um, using the kneaded eraser and then using the blending stump, the clean side of the small blending stump to soften some of the highlights. Here I'm using the kneaded eraser and just making, and I'm totally switching gears at this point now. You can see that it's looking at the smallest areas because I'm losing some form in the highlights. And so I want to plug in my highlights, make sure I um, am having um, anatomical, at least some anatomical correctness. By putting those highlights in, I can start to key in my brightest brights also. Please shape your new eraser to the shape that it needs to be. Don't try to use it as a mound of eraser and try to make the shape that you need it to be by drawing. Instead, make your tools work for you. Ask yourself what shape is, is that that I'm looking at from nature? Now, which tool will get me there? Do I need to use the blending stump? with medium on it? Do I need to use the blending, the clean side of the blending stump? Do I need to shape my eraser to pick up that highlight? My vine charcoal, is it too long? Is it too short? Are my edges starting to become too compartmentalized and separated? Then use the back of your charcoal, charcoal sachet to push those edges together. So here, I'm using the side of the blending stump to make some more dark edges to sculpt the face in the darkest areas that are around the face. And then coming back in with the fine charcoal now to really start drawing those shapes in. And at this point, I have um, that left eye 
it's starting to get to a point where I can use the charcoal pencil to really accent the darkest areas in that in, in this in the eye now you're not going to use your charcoal pencil and color over everything do not do that because the darkest darks only exist in certain areas of your shadows and that is where you're going to accent using cross hatching and parallel hatching use your pencil only to parallel hatch your darks into the zone that it needs to be don't color in your darks parallel hatch your darks into the valley that it needs to be so you'll be optically um, creating darks but really the vine charcoal exists still and the the parallel hatching of your charcoal pencil builds up a dark zone in the area that you're doing so you can see I can you can kind of see there the the rhythm of my pencil mark making it's parallel hatching in side the vine charcoal I will ask I'll also actually parallel hatch across the border of the vine charcoal again so that that the edges are connected to each other the darkest dark the dark file and charcoal and the middle grays are connected together because the parallel lines move across the, sh the boundaries of the negative of the black dark shapes and the and the light shapes what I really enjoy about this process is the kind of wispiness that's happening around the face right now this part of the drawing um, actually is exciting to me because the eyes and nose and mouth are starting to become rendered to a s certain level and then everything else around it seems to be like an atmospheric almost spiritual kind of level now to me that can be a successful drawing and what's great about the control of charcoal at this point is I can refine the hair but I can also take it back down to the wispiness using the charcoal sachet so as long as I do not use the more permanent pencils in the hair if you stay with the fine charcoal for most of the drawing you maintain control throughout here I you can see that I'm parallel hatching across the darks now I'm not coloring over these shadows because the vine charcoal has gotten me there almost to the valley that I need it to be the vine charcoal will get you to the valley that you need to be on most occasions the charcoal pencil is only there to accent the darks and bring it to the dark that you need it to be slowly As also the charcoal sachet is is a tool that I'll use throughout if I don't I don't just forget about it here and probably haven't used it in a while but I'll use it again at the end of this drawing demo to finish the drawing out where I want it to go I will also use a blending stump to drag medium across the paper the blending stump drags medium across paper in a beautiful kind of almost illustrative way and so it's a nice way to shop around with what I want to do with the edges of the the portrait the charcoal sachet will also be uh, made in your first lab day of charcoal you'll you'll you all use it you all make one um, in lab with a cart um, with the materials a cart full of the materials
Again, I'm just building up the darks in small little refined accents that I can make. I will also use the new eraser to pull out any highlights that need to come out or pick up any medium that I need. Another tip with the Nini eraser is the the longer the point or the longer the flat shape that you make away from the body of the eraser, the softer the eraser will erase. The closer and shorter the point is, the stronger the eraser is, thus you pick up more and the eraser will work stronger. So making a point long or a flat long you will make it an eraser that picks up very little, a short, long, or a short point or a short flat will pick up um, a lot of medium. Now don't think about your eraser as a tool to erase your mistakes. Your eraser should be the back end of your charcoal sachet. That should be your eraser by softening the shape that you want to redo until it doesn't exist anymore except for that it's medium on paper. Do not use your eraser to fix corrections. Use erasers to add light to make the shape that you need. And the sooner you think about the eraser in that way, the, um, the more natural it'll be to think about light shapes and dark shapes also. Finally, moving on to the eye on the right, you can see how quickly it is to make that shape look like that eye. There's so much medium in that area that when I use my eraser, I just need to pick up some areas and then soften it with my blending stump so that it's not too bright. I don't want my highlights to be too bright everywhere. What's so strange about charcoal drawing is that you think there is a lot of work to be done, but if you follow these steps and these guidelines, you will actually arrive to a finish so much sooner than you think. I can't tell you how many times I've witnessed um, a student drawing and arriving to the solution and not realizing that they've arrived to that solution and move past it, making a grave error in overworking that area. You will arrive to a finish sooner than you think if you follow these guidelines. And when you do that, you will see, I, am I there? You will ask yourself, that looks good, or that's exciting looking. That means you've arrived to a certain level of finish and you need to think about what are the next steps? Do I need to make, do I accent the darks? Do I need to accent my darks? Do I need to pick up some highlight? Here I'm using the, the back end of the charcoal sachet to kind of think about my whole drawing as atmospheric, uh, pulling in some darks where they need to be in the hair and I'm trying to think about my, now my portrait as a, as a work of art. How do I make it feel like it's not just a caricature or a portrait, a commercial portrait of someone? How do I make it feel like art? How do I make the atmosphere and mystery work for me that the charcoal gives naturally? Charcoal has this ambiguity where you can exists in the ambiguity and if you give enough contrast even though the shapes are not correct or they don't look like that person 
if there's enough contrast and ambiguity, our mind will fill in those shapes. So you do not have to fill in every shape that you see, especially in the darks. Do not fill in every shape that you need to see in the darks. Let the charcoal, let the charcoal work for you. It's almost like watercolor. Sometimes watercolor will make a shape and you can't control that shape, but it modulates in value for you. The same thing with this. Let the charcoal modulate for you. You just accent the darkest darks and the brightest brights and parallel hatch zones that need to be darker and let that fine charcoal modulate naturally. Remember to latch onto a cornerstone too, especially with only four weeks of figure drawing. The problem you'll arrive to is that you feel like you won't have enough time. But if you think about latching onto a cornerstone like the eyes and the nose, and then render those to a finish, and then kind of move throughout the form after that picking up certain lights picking up certain darks accenting it and blending edges together with the charcoal sachet you'll create a drawing that feels finished even though you didn't have enough time or think you don't have enough time to make a finished product Now you can see and start to kind of wonder, how do I get the eyes in the right place and the nose in the right place and the mouth in the right place if I do the large abstract dark shapes and large abstract white light shapes? How can I do that? You'll just will do it. It feels unnatural. You won't have a pretty drawing right away, but you will have medium on the paper. You will have the dark, general abstract dark shapes and abstract light shapes in the right areas, and you will sneak up to those zones, to those finished um, zones, and see a image start to be born out of nothing. Trust yourself. Trust yourself in the way that you see. You're all in here because you see shapes. You see shapes and value everywhere. You see contrast. So lay in those general darks. Lay in the abstract shapes. Carve around the abstract light shapes. Put down charcoal. Just put it down and then latch onto a cornerstone, a truth. The eyes and the nose, by working on those, you will have a more believable finished product sooner than you think. It still happens to me where I am thinking, man, I have a lot of work left, but then I start to see or look at videos or pictures and see, wow, I'm, I was a lot farther than I thought. There are lots of times where I think I could have left it here and it'd be just as powerful, if not more so, than when I finished it. Now, I have a... Um, an interest in uh, the naturalist or more timeless imagery and a timeless imagery for me is the sort of double um, braid especially on female figures 
And so for, uh, I'm using my artistic license to kind of change the model into having a more timeless hairstyle. Now the beauty about drawing from life is, is that you're just noting shapes from life in the way they act. And then you can actually finish your drawing later by either referencing uh, any person that you see or a photo of yourself. And you can actually finish the eye, finish the lips, and have a finished product from imagination after working from life. 